Jeff Baldrin has been running into various people and getting them to say something. I thought to the you show. were about to say Jeff Baldrin's been running his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, Jeff Baldrin has run into various people and has talked to them about the show. I talked about the fact that we had Baron Von Raschke, and here's Baron Von Raschke. Check Soul 5 Super Podcast. That is all the people need to know. That's great. And then, of course, the assassin. Uh, this is the assassin. And I'm telling you, Brian, 605 Super Podcast, it ain't never, ever, ever going to be over. And as Scott Cornish said, he was probably talking about how long the show actually lasts. It'll never, <laughs> ever, ever be over. And I want to thank Jeff. Jeff actually sent me this week, and this is going to go up on my wall, an autographed assassin mask. Something really, really cool. I'm oh, my God. That. Thank you, Jeff. But we made mention of one other one that we didn't have available last week to play on the air. This is the one people are still talking about. And after last week's Ken Patera story, I figured it'd be a good time to play this once again. Here's Ken Patera. I've heard a lot about you assholes over there at the 605 podcast. You're a bunch of cocksuckers. A bunch of just motherfuckers. Let's put it. Let's get right right to the point. I'm sick and tired of you guys. If I ever hear you say one more bad thing about Ken Patera, the world's strongest wrestler, I'll be looking for you. And there's Ken Patera with some words for the Super Podcast um. listeners. Was he always like that? Just don't lock, <laughs> just don't lock the, the fucking door on him <laughs> when he's hungry. Whatever you do, it's, it's not a good idea. Because the reason it came up was last week Scott Cornish told the story on the air that Ken Patera at some point in the late 90s did a morning radio show in upstate New York to promote a wrestling event. And he has this like blase way of saying really offensive things and not caring. <laughs> and the host was trying to be a little wacky and the host said, Hey, Ken, talk about Mil Moscaris. He he always seemed a little light in the loafers. And Ken goes, well, he's Mexican. Of course he's a fag. So <laughs> it was just like, yeah. as outrageous and wrong as you can get uh, on morning radio. Uh, but was he always like that? I know you were around him a little bit in Memphis in 83. Well, I, I, I remember him first as, as a, a slightly more um, sane, polite. Uh, no, no. Uh, I rode with him. I didn't ride with him. He rode with me a couple times. My uh, job in Memphis a couple times was to carry the, the stars that had flown into the Saturday night spot show from Memphis or something like that. So I got to ride with him a few times and he didn't accuse every Mexican of being gay or anything during the time that he rode in the car with me. <laughs> but I did come out and ask him, I swear to God, I asked his question. I, and we had just gone to Wendy's where once we got like, you know, fucking, uh, uh, a giant amounts of food and we're on the way to Jonesboro, Arkansas. And I said, Ken, being the world's strongest man, does your strength ever, ever, you know, you lose control and it get the best of you. You, however I phrased it, right. You ever get carried away. And he's, Oh, I've turned over a couple of Coke machines. And it's like next year he's being sentenced to prison for <laughs> throwing a boulder through the McDonald's window. <laughs> so 